Manuel Serum Visioned on his turn and looked up thankfully when he drew another Serum Visions and saw Ironworks as one of his scry cards. He ran another Serum Visions and drew the Ironworks. He did the math, that when he was done with the sums, he pumped his fist. He played both combo pieces and passed the turn. He clasped his hands together and prayed for Camille not to have an answer. Cornelison had the Relic Barrier t and uh, tapped the Incubator, forcing the French game designer to activate it before the end of turn. Camille did not have a pyroclasm, and the match went to a grateful and humble Manuel Bevent. Why did I just read a random excerpt of coverage from 2004, you might ask? Well, because sometimes you find yourself in your LGS. A little sneak peek there. And something catches your eye. Uh, it can be a rare card. It could be a really powerful card. I was in there and saw Mishra's workshop. Or sometimes it can be something as, as simple as a World Championship deck. This is Manuel Bevins. He made it to the semifinals. He did lose after this match. That was from his quarterfinals match, his victory, his 3-1 victory over Camille Cornelison. Now, this unfortunately has been opened. It was opened by the shop owner. That's why I got it for 30 bucks instead of the typical somewhere around 55 to 70. It really just depends for a sealed one. The shop owner didn't really trust the guy that brought it in. <laughs> it looked like it had been resealed. The plastic was a little bit wonky, he said. Um, the guy that brought it in found it in an old drawer. Uh, I don't blame the guy for wanting to double check something like that. But he knew that he'd be eating into the value of the actual product. And he did, unfortunately. So we're just going to go through it briefly. I got it for 30 One of the reasons I got this is because not only is it super cool, um, but the there's a signature there. Not only is it super cool, it does have some gold board, pretty powerful cards in it overall. And what I find with some commander play groups is they don't mind the use of gold border cards. Um, I play Pauper a lot in our play group and they don't mind the use of gold board and stuff. So this has some artifact lands and they'll probably be putting in my Pauper deck just for aesthetics. But it also comes with some other stuff that may be good later on. And uh, if you're really interested in learning a little bit more about the <laughs> um, gameplay I was just reading off, then uh, I'll link that in the description so you could sort of understand a little bit more about what magic was like in 2004 where artifacts flowed like water. Powerful cards were starting to get released. Power creep was becoming more and more evident as time went on. Um, I don't have an artifact in play, Matt, unfortunately. So this deck actually has something very interesting in it that is worth a little bit more than a lot of people think. So with this specifically, it has some intro cards. Um, with Michael Bevan, Manuel Bevan, sorry. And it has these tokens. These tokens are considered pretty collectible by a lot of people because you can send these off and have these created um, or have these altered by a famous artist or one that you particularly like in the magic world or even in a different card game world or just somebody you like that does art and is willing to do a token. Um, these are worth usually around two, three bucks a piece, but the cool thing is these decks came with quite a few of them as you can see so i think this one should come with around 12 so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 hey has all of those not a huge value um i, I you know 36 bucks technically but i think the main point of these is you really do want to send them off and have them altered so i'm actually probably going to send a couple of these to Therese nielsen um if she'll be willing to do it and just to do some small art on the card for some tokens that I use fairly often. Insects for my uh, Locust God in my Nekusar deck and a couple others. Um, so really interesting uh, thing there. A lot of people have never seen those before. They weren't aware that these existed. But if you get a chance to pick some up, I would highly recommend it. Um, for the price, it's great. If you like blank tokens, it's kind of hard to find them. It has a text box. It has all sorts of box, sub-creatures, everything. So this is a little bit more information on the World Championships game. So um, Julian actually took it home. A million dollars worth of prizes to these guys. So congrats back then. I'm sure it's already all gone. And there's a little bit more about Manuel Bevan. He is a little bit more famous in poker than he was with Magic. 
Um, so if you're interested in old magic, I would definitely recommend looking up some of these guys. I mean, obviously Gabriel the Thief is still in the game. The rest of the guys I don't believe are in it much anymore. Manuel Bevent. So this is what we should see in the deck. Obviously, very strong artifact deck um, for the time. There were a lot of decks that essentially were just anti this deck. I mean, I believe he lost to a deck that was supposed to hose it, and it did. But here's one reason I sort of like this. Um, you do get some cool older art, and the gold border, a lot of people just tend to like these mana leaks. So these, not worth a whole lot. We can check some of this stuff out later. I'm also going to organize everything. The deck is completely shuffled. It seems like, maybe not completely shuffled. But um, these are sideboard. This is the sideboard. So we have our mana leaks. You can tell we're in the sideboard. If you can still read it up here, I'll leave it up here for everyone to check out. We have our pyroclasms. Three of those. Perfect. That's exactly what we needed. Seeding songs. Uh, these are awesome cards. And if you're Plague Blitz, you have bordered, gold border. They just look good with gold border. Red cards really look good with gold border. Red and blue. So I'm actually glad that that's the, well, essentially what this set is. Or this deck is. Furnace Dragon. Pretty much what he lost to. <laughs> when the game was said and done this is what kicked him out of the tournament and why he lost in the semifinals fireball can't go wrong with fireball there should be one of these in the main deck so looks like we are done with sideboard for now um yep yeah, that's everything in the sideboard so we're in the main deck now so you have to excuse me i'm going to push the sideboard up Main deck, Fireball, Talisman of Progress. This card is one a good one to have for Commander. Um, Talisman of Progress is fairly pricey these days. It's somewhere around seven or eight bucks. Uh, so having gold border cards, hey, if your player group lets you use them, then no problem with that. Talisman of Dominance, another uh, awesome artifact. Here's the point of buying this one. <laughs> Even gold border and non-tournament legal for Commander, these things still go for around $12 a piece. So I was sort of shocked when I saw it for 30 I think even opened, as long as everything's in there and in good shape like these are, they're a little curled, which I think is acceptable. Um, there's ways to flatten them out. We'll, we, you know, I might try that out. But that does come with four chrome mocks and four fabricates. So overall, I, I'm pretty glad I picked it up. And I believe four Talisman of Progress, but I could be wrong. Three Talisman of Progress. So we'll start collecting our chrome mocks over here. Condescend, awesome pauper card. Um, I probably going to put some of these in my pauper deck because I do like the gold border. Now, when it comes to artifact lands, everyone loves artifact lands. So we'll start collecting those over here. Here's another Chrome Box. Vault of Whispers. Can't go wrong. Um, artifact Swamp. We'll just keep our collection rolling. There's your knowledge. One of my personal favorite cards. It's not super powerful, but I really do enjoy it. It's great in Commander if you're really just trying to draw cards. Goblin Charbelcher. Hey. It's a card. It doesn't really do much these days, but in the day it was quite a powerhouse. Now one of the reasons I like doing these types of videos, especially this one, is it introduces people to a part of magic history that they're probably not really familiar with. And I think that's very important. A lot of people, younger players specifically, aren't familiar with how powerful these artifact sets were when they came out. I mean, you can read some of these cards, and if you look at the cards from here down, these and older cards, you'll see that these are very powerful. Affinity was a newer mechanic, and boy was it busted. All right, our artifact land search continues. Looks like we have at least one of each. Uh, actually, no, I take that back. We are missing one. We might get there later. See the sign on. I think the most expensive one right now since they reprinted Ancient Den uh, in the newest commander set. So, mm, used to be Ancient Den. Used to be worth about three to five bucks a piece, but that's gone now. So condescend, all right, more of these. Hey, popped up. So we do have at least one of each hiding out in here. Running out of place to put these cards. That's fine. There's Fabricate. Fabricate's an incredible magic card um, for Commander if, if you go with artifact-based strategies. A lot of people do. I mean, they're just really good. So you search your library for an artifact, reveal it, put it in your hand. Shuffle your library. Three mana, sorcery speed, not incredible. This is another reason I really sort of gravitated towards buying this for $30 because 
I am cheap. Um, I don't like spending a whole lot of money on magic cards unless it's singles, but I feel with this, even Gold Border, someone will want a card Clan Ironworks if their commander group lets them play with Gold Border. There's no reason why people wouldn't want this. It's awesome in commander-based strategies. Uh, so, Cart Clan Ironworks. Uh, I think we are totally running out of space here. We'll make it work. Serum Vision's another key card in the deck. One mana, sorcery speed. It's one of the reasons it's considered a terrible cantrip in modern, but it's one of the better ones that you got in modern, so you got to deal with it. It's a modern staple, um, falling out of favor, of course. This is actually my favorite art for Serum Visions. They did a couple promos I really don't like. The Secret Layer version wasn't the biggest fan of most of the art. I like the Dexter one. I like the pixelated uh, skull, but the rest, yeah, great colors, looked really good in foil. But with this in a Secret Layer video, so moving on. Another thirst for knowledge. Dark Steel Citadel, another one. Should be in pretty much every commander deck. <laughs> it is indestructible land. Artifact counts as an artifact, so hey, I mean, it pretty much gets rid of the bad part of having an artifact land if you have anything that synergizes with the artifacts. Should be in your commander deck anyway. Not every commander deck, because it just taps for colorless with no real upside other than being an artifact. Another Fabricate, two more seats at the sign on, and there's another one. Can't have enough of those. Pentad Prisms, yeah, popper. <laughs> I mean, it's used for that. We'll lay that guy down over here. Thirst for Knowledge, we should be running out of those soon. Another Talisman, I believe there's three each of these. We haven't gotten a Thought Cast yet. Awesome popper card, uh, affinity for artifacts, so it could potentially be one blue. I say could potentially, it will usually be one blue for two cards. Incredible, once again, affinity, completely broken mechanic. Um, Wizards should be ashamed of themselves, but no, all joking aside, it's a it's a great mechanic, um, but it does dominate pretty much every format. Picking up some more Serum Visions, nothing wrong with that. Toss them on the pile. Chrome Mox, hey, that should be the final one. So we'll throw them over here and move on. Talisman Dominance should also be the final one, so we'll move it on. Pentad Prism. So I just think a lot of people aren't familiar with a lot of these cards. Mirror Incubator was really powerful. Mm. Not so much anymore. <laughs> but a lot of people are familiar with a lot of these cards, and that's fine. There's no, you know, I don't think, I'm trying not to be so old that uh, I judge anyone or, or anybody for being, you know, ignorant to a lot of this stuff. I actually did not play when these came out. I was not a big Magic player. My cousin always tried to get me into it when I was younger, and I should have. He tried to get me into it, matter of fact, around this era, maybe a little bit sooner. It was when we were playing Pokemon a lot, so it was probably 2001. Um, I wish I'd gotten into Magic back then and, and stayed into it because I'd probably have a lot of awesome cards that I got for really cheap at the time because I've always been singles-minded. Even when I was playing Pokemon, I didn't like to crack packs that much. But, uh, yeah, wish I'd stuck with that, but I didn't, and there's nothing you can do. Uh, I might have a visitor. Can you hear him? Okay, he just laid down. That's the dog. <laughs> He's a big boy. He's about to turn a year tomorrow, I believe. Not by the time this video uploads, but when I'm making it. And he's, uh, what's he up to now? Probably around 95 pounds. He's a, he's a big kid. There's another thought cast. So we're rounding the deck out. Now, we don't have a whole lot left. I'm sort of done talking about it, but you can sort of read some of the cards and understand why this deck was powerful. You pump out a bunch of small artifacts that have some value and then you use that to force out your affinity creatures and the sideboards you have some ramp in the form of seething song and furnace dragon furnace dragon blows up other affinity decks or artifact based strategies which was incredibly def dominant at this point in the game and like i said it doesn't take a genius to figure out why a lot of these cards are completely insane Cart clan ironworks recently last year the year before came back and had a huge uh resurgence in popularity in modern and ended up having to get banned <laughs> that was uncommon that was going for about 20 bucks a piece so i'm glad i got four of them now these little versions here are actually shockingly valuable um because some people don't care about gold border but just to give you an idea we can try to scan some of these and see where they come in at so i'm going to start picking these up um very carefully as to not damage anything but i think everything should be good if it gets damaged it gets damaged um, thought cast specifically aren't worth anything. Talismans will keep out Fireball, Serum Visions, Mirror Incubator. These are cards I know don't have any inherent value. The one Char Belcher, 
Pentad Prisms, Condescends, Thirst. Really, this is essentially what you have it for. And we'll even scan the token. We'll, uh, we'll show you what the tokens are like. Because, like I said, those blink tokens are shockingly valuable. Uh, people really like having those on tap, especially if you had the extra money to sort of commission your favorite, some of your favorite magic artists to go in and do some artwork for it. Um, let me bring out my handy dandy scan background, which seems to work pretty well. And then let's see what's going on. So, it's Talisman Dominance. I believe Talisman Dominance just isn't worth anything. Oh, look at that. The, uh, uh oh, uh oh, it's picking up too much here. There you go. The, um, yeah, I wish. <laughs> I'm not that lucky. But there you go, the Manuel Bevan one special, 237 apiece. Um, would not have figured that, actually, for Dominance. So, Talisman of Progress. That is not the right one, but we can't always double. We can always fix that. There you go, 350 apiece for the uh, Manuel Bevan one. So, there you go, even for 30 bucks. These decks still have value. They are gold border. That 535 Burkhart Clan Ironworks got four of those. Fabricate, not a particularly um, expensive card in any case, but 263 a piece for the gold border. Like I said, some play groups still have the original version, um, so people don't complain about them playing with the gold border, and then they will support using the gold border just for aesthetics. A lot of people do like it. And finally, our chrome box comes in at uh, 1192 a piece. So there, like I said, there is some definitely some value here. The question is, do I want to take it apart? No, I don't want to take it apart. I probably will not sell any of these. I will work on these um, over time. Any, anytime. Whoa, that just picked up way too much stuff. So it's blank. So now we probably need to try to find this one. Token blank. Will it pop up? It will not pop up. Wow, okay. So that's something we're going to have to... Uh, it's just going crazy over here trying to pick up on what card this is. No, nope, that was a flooded strand. <laughs> if only. I mean, it could be if you wanted to alter it that way. But there you go. That's the deck in a nutshell. Super interesting piece of magic history. I wish they did these still. Um, there's nothing wrong with gold border cards. If your play group lets you use them, I think they're a lot of fun. So we will pack this up very gingerly. I don't want to damage anything. I'm going to try to keep it together. I may bust it out. At some point, for some just some 60-card shenanigans with the boys. <laughs> but we do have one other thing we want to tackle um, while we're here. I've been waiting to open this up for quite a while. I bought it a long time ago before people started giving them away because they're uh, so worthless. But I got one of these. <laughs> uh, I think these are neat. You can use these as... Um, you can use these as life counters or token counters if you get a token you actually use a lot but I, I like the idea of using them as life counters and they come with three per pack they're like two ninety nine pack so for having some sort of handy life counter I don't think it's all that bad so we'll crack it up we'll see which three we got some of these are worth a little bit but they're really just not overall so I feel some some what's this before we see which ones we got Oh, look at that. They really expect people to go all out. Here's all the different ones you can get. I would love to get the Poison Counter one. That would make my night. My day. It's technically day. Or the warm one. But uh, we'll just have to see what we end up getting. I'm probably going to get some trash ones like the pirate and the dinosaur. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, let's find out. Maybe we'll even check them off as we get them. But probably not. So the first one. Saproling. Um, okay, <laughs> I'll take it. A buddy of mine actually runs a Gave Commander deck, so he probably would actually really enjoy this. Um, so here's, you can keep track of, uh, how many you have, and then their power toughness. So that's why you can use it as a life counter. It does go up to 99. If you want to use it as a life counter, so if it correlates to your favorite Commander deck or the one you're playing, then you can feel free to use it. Um, I think it's actually pretty neat. I'm a big fan of these things for casual play. Thopter, actually perfect. Um, a lot of my account names uh, for different, um, toss that plastic over there, for different things online is actually Thopter Token. So it's funny that I got uh, Thopter Token, Relic Token, or whatever these are called. 
I'm not sure if they're going to do these ever again. Um, they weren't very well received this time around. <laughs> so we'll see how that goes. And the last one, please be a poison counter. It is a merfolk. I called it. I told you guys I was going to get a merfolk one. Um, so this is actually pretty entertaining. A buddy of mine has a... It started off as a very casual commander deck, merfolk based, and it became a very powerful commander deck with very little money put into it. He is a beast when it comes to putting decks together for a budget. And his merfolk deck, when it was brand new, had barely any cards in it that could do anything, absolutely stomped us every time we play. And we have pretty powerful decks. We're, we don't typically do a super, we don't have a super weak play group overall. So his deck just wrecked us all the time. So that, that'll be a good gift for him. So I've got two, I got one for myself, one for one bud, and one for another one. So uh, we'll have to make them even here, right? That's going to bother everybody. So we'll put it on 99 here. And then that's it. That's just all the little bonus for now. So, yeah, hope you guys really enjoyed checking out the uh, World's Deck with me. I know probably hard to find a video of it on YouTube. It's not super interesting to look at, but I think it is. And uh, I'll, I'll, like I said, I'll link some info on that particular World's Championship game or event in the description for you to read if you want to. I don't blame you for not wanting to read it. It's no video coverage, so sayonara.